Okay, welcome to another episode of Crazy Dad's Garage. Here's the next one in our line of uh, old tool restoration videos. Now this is something that, uh, yeah, it's not exactly I'm building old cars, guys, but hey, it's the middle of the winter, cold out in the shop, and uh, this gives you just a kind of a fun little pastime to do, uh, to use up your spare time with, and not have to go out there and fire up the furnace and everything. So we're going to start in on this one. This is a plumb bob. Um, for those of you that don't know what it is, um, this is something used in carpentry work a lot. And you'll have a string that comes out of this hole right there. You can see the old broken piece of fishing line that somebody's had on this one. And so you suspend this thing by a string, and then you can hang it uh, from any point up in the air. And when it starts swinging around and, and settles down to a stop, that will be 100% perfectly straight below the point at the top. So it's even more accurate than using a level. Um, and, but it's something that's not real common anymore. Most people don't use them except in some real fancy type of woodworking and that sort of thing, um, but they're, they're extremely accurate and uh, kind of fun to have. Um, this one, well, we saw there a minute ago, has that, it says Burger 16 on it, so I suspect that Burger is the brand name of it, and I'm assuming that the 16 stands for 16 ounces, because that's roughly what this thing weighs. And so, it's not in bad condition. It's got a steel tip down at the end here that is rusted and most of the rest of it is just corrosion and some basic stuff like that. So we're going to clean it up. Uh, we'll get the rust off of that tip and repaint it. Uh, this uh, cap actually comes off so you can tie the string in there and there is a spring inside of it for whatever reason. So we will take it apart, clean those pieces, polish it up, and get it put back together. And I don't know that I'm going to polish it till it shines, but uh, we'll probably do it with some pretty fine sandpaper and then call it good at that. So that's where we're going to start. I'll reset the camera here and get it on the tripod and I'll show you how this thing comes apart. Alrighty then, let's get to moving here. And this is already loose enough so I can take it apart by hand, so we'll unscrew that. neat thing about a tool like this is they're actually a quite precision instrument. And uh, for me to look at the machine work and things that went into them is always fascinating. Um, string is stuck in there, we may have to find out why. I bet there's a knot that it's hung up against. Yep, there we go. Probably can't. Oh, you can kind of see it in the video. Well, there you go. So that was up in there. This one used fishing line. That's kind of not the norm. Something as old as this probably had a cotton string in it. Um, this, I'm not exactly sure why it's in there. Doesn't appear to be holding anything in. Um, but it was just pushing against that for whatever reason. And maybe there's something that I don't know about the plumb bob, but maybe you could screw that out and get some kind of an adjustment there. But there's the spring. We'll clean that up. It's kind of just got a little tiny bit of corrosion on it. I think it's probably galvanized plated, but I, yeah, I don't know. We'll see as we get it apart. Um, I think that's all the farther apart that comes. And I'm not seeing anything down in there, but uh, let's see if this will pop loose here. Oh, it does. I think it's unscrewing. Maybe it's just turning. Oh, oh, that's what the spring's doing. <laughs> so the spring goes in there. puts pressure against that point, but the point can also uh, move in and out of there. Alright, 
I guess you got to be more of a carpenter or experienced old-fashioned carpenter than I am to know exactly what the situation would be that you'd use that in. But that's interesting. Now getting that out of there might be a little trickier, but... Yep. Alright, I'll get something and push it down out of there, but that should fall out of there just fine. And, and then I think... That's as far apart as it comes. So I'll go get something to push that out of there, and then we'll be back and start the cleaning process. Alright, so here's what I'm figuring out. Um, I can push that tip in there, but it only goes so far, and then it hits something. And so I'm suspecting that this line that I can see that goes all the way around it right there is actually another this piece is probably threaded into here and that tip is probably captured within this but I have been trying to get this loose here and I'm not succeeding in doing anything but boogering up the brass because it's so soft and so I am just going to leave that in there and uh, we'll put it back together like that so that we have pressure on it and then I'm going to clean this thing up to start with on the wire wheel and see what we come up with on that tip. So that's going to be my next project and I'm probably going to see what it does to try to wire wheel the whole brass piece here and just see how that works because I'm sure there's a lot of divots on this thing now that I'm going to have to take a file to to get them cleaned out but I just want to see how it's going to clean up and especially see if I can get that tip cleaned up with it in there so that's what we'll be doing and we will be back as soon as I figure that out all right that's cleaning up fairly good um, that tip actually cleaned up really well um, and it's something about the type of steel that it is it's by nature a blackish color so I don't think I'm going to need to painted or anything. So my process from here is going to be to finish wire wheeling the rest of the body of the plumb bob and uh, then we'll take it from there and see. So I'll get it all at least this clean and then I want to see if I can clean up a lot of those divots and scars that are put in it there. At least we'll do some of it might leave some of it in there just for patina sake but I want to get it cleaned up and and looking pretty nice so I'll be back as soon as I get it wire wheeled there we have it all cleaned up on the wire wheel isn't that pretty I love the way brass cleans up makes for a really nice pretty piece of equipment there and really I think probably part of the whole mystique of a plumb bob among an old fashioned carpenter is who had the coolest one. Um, because there's a lot of, I mean, I've seen ones that just, they're just a plain chunk of steel with a hole drilled in them to hold the string. And this is a pretty fancy one and uh, would have taken somebody some time or been a more expensive piece of equipment to use. So, anyway, I just find that fascinating. We'll uh, now take the file out and clean off some of these um, divots that have been put in there. I won't get the divot part completely out, but I'm going to knock down anything that's raised above the surface of the, uh, of the normal brass turning there. And uh, then the divots will just be left in there as part of the patina of the tool. So anyway, I'll do that and... Uh, come back I'm hoping that I can file it and then wire wheel it and get the finish all to match instead of having file marks in there if I can't then I'll have to take some sandpaper and sand the whole thing so that's where we're going next okay here we are after the filing part and uh, again I'm using very light pressure as I'm filing on there I don't want the file to dig in at all but uh, we've got all of the uh, so let's see if we can see here. We've got a divot right here. I don't know if you can see that very good, but uh, actually, let's do this one right here. It's showing up. 
So any time that you make a divot in something like this, the, the material that's in the bottom of that divot has to go somewhere, and usually it gets squeezed out to the side. And so all I'm trying to do is knock those high spots off of there, and I think I've got that done. And it didn't scratch it up very bad, so I'm going to wire wheel it again and see if it kind of uh, takes out all of the file marks. And uh, that's probably about as far as we'll go, at least on the outside of it. I think I'll take it apart, take the spring out, and kind of clean it up on the wheel. And uh, I don't know if I'm even going to put a piece of string back in it, um, but that will have it all fixed up and pretty and I'm debating the whole time of doing this on whether to put a coat of clear lacquer on it or anything like that that would keep it from corroding again and I don't know I might do that but uh, we'll see I probably won't with this video but anyway I'm gonna wire wheel it again and we'll show you what we've ended up with uh, then I'll pull the spring out and do it alright <clears throat> so here's the spring out of the inside and this is really interesting which speaks to the quality of this piece that we've got this is something I don't know for sure but this spring has the appearance of being made out of brass I didn't know you could make a brass spring and maybe it's just a brass coated steel spring but anyway it's something a little fancier than just your average uh, you know galvanized spring steel spring so kind of a cool touch there got it cleaned up um, went ahead and wire wheeled the entire outside of the body of the thing and uh, it just blended all those file marks right out of there and looks awesome so we're gonna stick the thing back together I'm not going to try to clean off those threads for two reasons first because they're working nicely and second, I'm afraid that by using the wire wheel on them that we will mess them up. Um, so we're just going to screw the thing back together. And there we have it. Our nice fancy little Burger 16 Plumb Bob. An essential element of every true carpenter's toolkit. Right? There you go. Oh, well, I think it's a cool thing. It'd be a fun addition again to uh, my antique toolbox. I don't know if it's an antique, but uh, by the time I live for another five years, it probably will be. It's at least that old. So, anyway, kind of fun. There we go. Wrap up another video here of uh, Crazy Dad's Garage, uh, how to pass the winter time when you don't want to go out in your cold shop episode. <laughs> So there we go. I'll take a picture and we'll wrap this thing up and we'll get her put up so that you guys can see it. Maybe it'll inspire you to go out in your garage and either find an old tool that you've got or get out and look at swap meets and garage sales and see what you can find because this kind of stuff, it's out there. It's all over the place. I've gathered up these pieces that I've got from dozens of different sources and uh, it'll just be fun to clean them up and get them all back out there where they're in working condition even though I have no intention of ever working with them anymore because I've got plenty of new replacements that I don't need so or so that I don't need to I just think it'll be fun to have an old collection so there we go hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching Crazy Dad's Garage uh, don't go away we will definitely have some more car videos here for you shortly got lots of fun projects in the works right now